All right, so this video is going to be part three of our convergence and divergence problems with series. So again, we want to prove that this series is convergent or divergent. We have our sum up here from n equals one to infinity of negative one to the n times the square root of n over n plus one. Okay, now here, of course, we know not a p series, not a geometric series. Look to our tests. And you can first try the test for divergence. Of course, you can try the test for divergence. But of course, you can see that if the test for divergence fails, you're not going to be able to do an integral test, comparison test, limit comparison test, because this, there's this negative one to the end here. Okay, so let's look at that test for divergence quick. The limit as n approaches infinity of negative one to the n times the square root of n over n plus one. Okay, that negative one to the n, that is not going to matter at all for your limit. Okay. We've discussed that before. It's not going to matter. So you're just going to have the square root of n over n plus 1. Of course, you know that this is going to be bigger than your square root of n. All right. So what that's telling you is that this will equal 0. Okay. So test for divergence does not work here. Oops. Does not work here. So that's going to be a big red X. Okay. Integral test. Not going to work because you have the negative 1 to the n. And of course, for the same reasons, comparison and limit comparison will not work as well. Now, what we can look for is that alternating series test. Okay, this is a perfect example of, of, of an alternating series test problem because you have that negative one to the end there. Okay, and we already proved that it was equal to zero with the, or the limit was equal to zero with the test for divergence. So this is where we turn to next. Now, when we do this, the first we need to prove that this is decreasing and we need to prove that the limit as n approaches infinity of b sub n equals zero. If we can prove that, then this is convergent by the alternating series test. So we need to first find out if this is decreasing. So let's take a look. We have our, well, first off, let's get rid of that negative one to the end there. We're not going to worry about that, okay? That's going to give us our b sub n, and that's what we need to figure out if, it, if that's decreasing. So let's look at this. We get rid of that negative one to the n. We end up with a rad n over n plus one, okay? And, well, this rad n over n plus one here, if we add one to, to n, so we plug in an n plus one, we get a red n plus one over n plus one plus one. Why did I plug in an n plus one for n? Well, I'm trying to figure out if the next term in the series is gonna be, is gonna make this whole thing increase or is gonna make this whole thing decrease, okay? If this is smaller than this, then I can continue, okay? But if it's larger, then we can see that it's increasing and that's a problem, okay? So. That's kind of the reason why I did this. Now this is equal to the square root of n plus one over n plus two. Okay, and you can see here that your denominator here is bigger, okay? Your denominator here is getting bigger. Of course, under the square root is getting bigger, but that's under a square root and that's not really going to matter as much, okay? This n plus two, is making more of a difference than adding one under a radical is, okay? So you see that this actually is decreasing. So this is greater than this, okay? So it's decreasing. We can put a nice green check mark there. Now we've already kind of done this with the test for divergence, but we need to see if the limit as n approaches infinity of this rad n over n plus one is zero. Now, why I said we've done this is because when we were doing the test for divergence, I already said, just get rid of that negative one to the end. We don't care about it. Okay. So we're basically doing the same thing over again, but without having to deal with that negative one to the end and just cross it off. And you can see, of course, as we said before, that's going to be equal to zero. Okay. So that is going to be a little check mark as well. Okay, so this is convergent by the alternating series test. Now, what about this series? The sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared minus 1 over n. Now, you can kind of already, you know, as you start to do more and more of these, the test for divergence kind of, I mean, for some of these problems, easier problems like this, 
it kind of just flows through your head at once and you can tell whether this is going to diverge or you're gonna to have to keep going, okay? And for this, if you, you end up doing the test for divergence in your head, you can see, well, limit as n approaches infinity, this is going to become zero and this is gonna become zero. So the test for divergence doesn't work here, okay? So as you start to do more repetition, this starts to become a lot more mental, okay? Now, next is the integral test. Okay, the integral test, we can do that here because this is going to be easy to integrate. This is just going to be a reverse power rule, okay? So we take the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared, or 1 over, sorry, x squared. We have to use x's now. x squared minus 1 over x dx, okay? And we can't have that infinity as a bound, so what we do to kind of cheat our way through this is take the limit as t approaches infinity, the integral from 1 to t. And now we're going to have our 1 over x squared minus 1 over x dx. Okay, we can just now integrate this. We get the limit as t approaches infinity of, this is going to be, well, this is x to the negative 2. So this is going to become a negative 1 over x. Okay, so it becomes a negative 1 over x. And this will just become minus natural log absolute value of x. And that's going to be evaluated from 1 to t. Okay, so doing our evaluation step, and that's going to be over here now, we get the limit as t approaches infinity of, this is a negative 1 over t, minus the natural log of t. And of course, we're not going to need absolute values for that, okay? Because that's going to be a positive value here. Now, the next thing we're going to have is a minus, and we'll have in parentheses here, a negative 1 over 1 minus the natural log of 1. Okay, so this will end up just being, well, this is 0, so this goes away, and this becomes just plus 1. So, kind of writing this out here a little more cleanly, you get the limit as t approaches infinity of negative 1 over t minus the natural log of t. And again, don't need the absolute value science. Don't know why I put them in again. And plus 1. All right. And you can see here that as t approaches infinity, this is going to get larger and larger in the negative direction, which means that this is going to, the integral diverges. Okay. That means that the integral diverges. And so this series is going to diverge by the integral test. All right, great. So I think the next probably two videos that I'm going to do is going to be proving convergence or divergence. And then we'll also be proving, we'll do some absolute convergence, conditional convergence. We'll, we'll throw some of that stuff in there as well. So we'll definitely be getting some practice with that if you feel unsure with that. Okay. So that's going to do it for this video. So if this video helped you, make sure to leave a like and subscribe by clicking my icon in the top left. You can also view the playlist for sequences and series and the next video in the series. Lastly, if these videos are really helping you and you would like to consider supporting me, I have my Patreon linked in the description down below, along with some other pretty cool links that you should definitely check out. See you soon!